Hey everyone, this is Christopher Luxon, the former CEO of Air New Zealand. This is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. This is Tracy Ibarra. I'm an executive solutions at Dell Technologies. This is Travis Chappell, founder of Build Your Network. If you are wanting to learn how to embrace change, to navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, my very good friend, Dennis Giannoutsos. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsos. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding their balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today, and if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey, listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world, and I want to welcome you to this Ask Dennis episode. Hey, listeners, if you haven't already checked out the Facebook group, Leadership is Changing, go ahead and join that community. It's a great community and uh, some great things and uh, insights uh, and stories and so forth being shared in that group. If you're on LinkedIn, go and check out the LinkedIn page, Leadership is Changing, and uh, look forward to seeing you there as well. The Ask Dennis episode is a freestyle episode. This is where I'm asked a question by our listeners, or I share my thoughts, insights, and experiences from working with many leaders around the globe. So I want to welcome you to today's session, and I want to talk to you today about, in the midst of ambiguity and chaos, stay calm. Yep, that's easy for me to say, not always easy to do. Here in New Zealand at the moment, we have what we call the 36th America's Cup. And America's Cup is a yachting regatta that has been happening for many, many years, and has been sort of dominated by the Americans over the years. And going back 20, 30 years ago, actually, uh, it was won by other uh, countries and so forth, and it's been going backwards and forwards between different countries and challenges over the years. Well, in the last America's Cup, New Zealand was the winner of the America's Cup, and what happened is that it's now been brought back to New Zealand in fact, I do workshops here in New Zealand and Auckland and at the Royal uh, Yacht Squadron of New Zealand, and that's the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron, I should say, and I do some workshops there. But outside the room, in a sort of uh, beautiful cupboard or beautiful way it's been set up, is the actual America's Cup. And it's on display and, on, and demonstrations for people to go along and look at, take photos with, but it represents so much, which is fantastic. Well, this year, starting just now, uh, we actually have the America's Cup is underway. And uh, what tends to happen is you have the challengers will race in many races to then, in different round robins, to actually then decide who the winner is to go ahead and have the right to challenge the defender. The defender is Emirates News Team New Zealand, and uh, as I said before, and the three challengers are coming from three different countries, from the UK. We have one team, we have the USA, uh, it's actually called American Magic, and then we have the Italian team, which is Luna Rossa. So the three different teams are here to race and they are competing. Now what's happening is that this year they are using different types of yachts. And the yachts are AC-75s, and these yachts are almost like flying on top of the water. When they're at their huge, uh, amazing speeds that they can get, they are on top of the water, and they are airborne, which is amazing to see. Now, what's happening here is that uh, they are currently working out to see who the challenger will be for the America's Cup. 
and it's called the Prada Cup, and that's where they actually have different round robins, and they will actually work out between the three of them who will be the actual challenger for the America's Cup. But a couple of days ago, something happened which was just, just amazing to see. First of all, it was the final race of round robin number two, and American Magic was actually racing against Luna Rossa. And on the last leg, there tend to be five legs, and the last leg, American Magic was about to go and win the race. But as something happened and the winds changed and so forth, the actual boat became not just above the water, it actually got full airborne and then went up and then down onto its side and capsized. And what was really interesting here is the fact that the boat started to fill with water on its side. It started to sink. The crew were there hiding in part of the boat, but also um, sheltering and so forth. The crew were okay, uh, so that was important. But the second thing is what was really amazing to see is that all teams, UK, of course the USA because they're in the water, but also their support crew, the Italians and the Kiwis, they all got around that American boat to help them out, help the crew, and then help the team bring that boat back to shore. Try and save its sales, massive sales that it has, huge amounts of dollars invested in these sales and in the material and so forth. That was saved. They then tried to save the boat and they towed it back slowly to the actual back to the port. What was really amazing is the fact that everyone did jump in. So all rivals jumped in to actually help out. And the thing here is that it didn't matter whether they're opposition. All teams wanted to save the Patriot. That's what they call the American Star Magic Tower Boat Patriot. And they wanted to save it. And the boss of the syndicate for the Americans, Terry Hutchinson, praised all rivals for coming together to help out the boat and help them bring it together. So team, what was really interesting was the fact that everyone got in there to help out in amongst that chaos and the ambiguity of what's going to happen next to the boat, what's going to happen next and all this chaos. Millions and millions of dollars spent in the boat, were on the boat. Millions of dollars spent on actually bringing a team here and was this the end of their racing and their chance to challenge for the America's Cup. But as you step back to look at it, and you looked at the, the syndicate boss, Terry Hutchinson, speak about what actually happened afterwards. It was actually quite interesting to see his whole, the way he actually carried himself, the way he actually spoke, the way he actually came across. He was calm, calculated, had humour, and also was confident. And so by him portraying those four different areas, it was really interesting to see. Because you see, a lot of people, there was a lot of emotions happening. And a lot of people could have even said, oh, it's over, they're gone, they won't be able to challenge. But what actually happened is the syndicate boss, along with other leaders in the organization, turned around and stepped up. Not only that, they were surrounded by other leaders from the rival teams to help them, encourage them, to help them step up as well. But if we look into the four different areas and we talk about those, let's do that now and talk about the four different areas that the syndicate boss was actually portraying. The first one was, as I said before, was calm, breathe. And he was actually breathing and he was actually doing those deep belly breaths to, to calm himself down. There was things that they can't control as a team, but there were two things that they can control as a team. Their attitude and the way they react to things. And number two, where they are going next. The big thing out of all of it was stay calm. The second thing is calculated. So the syndicate boss, what was he doing? He was talking about the facts. What happened? Why it happened? They're still not sure what was going on, but also where they're going next in the sense of what might need to happen next and the facts around that. He recognized people. He recognized the crew. He recognized the support team for the crew and the, and the, and the American Magic Boat. He also recognized the rivals, the other team members, and how they came in to help and support him as well, and the team. But also, 
They are calculated in knowing where they're going next. They are calculated already. They're already fixing the boat. They're already underway with it. They're already making modifications or fixing a huge hole inside the boat. They're being very strategic. So they're calculated in the sense that they're very strategic. They know what the strategy is going forward and how they need to handle this. You see, all the teams, doesn't matter which country they come from, they would have actually had strategies, plans, and everything for all sorts of different scenarios. And so they know what they're going to do and when they need to do it. The third thing was around humor. He was laughing at himself. He was making some fun of the situation. Wasn't being taking fun or, or poking fun at anyone else. It was just at the situation. He could see the light within the actual sort of uh, scenario, but he could see it was an opportunity and a problem as well. And the big thing here was he just kept smiling. And so if you can keep smiling, that doesn't mean it fixes everything, but it surely helps with the attitude and where you are going next. And number four was around confidence. He was showing his team, his stakeholders, the people who were supporting him, confidence. He had a strong voice. His voice wasn't whimpering or wasn't sort of very emotional. He was very strong in his voice. He stood up, just like the others in the team as well as leaders, and they stood up to do what they needed to do. But then they did the last thing, which is really important. They believe in themselves. They believe in themselves, their team, and their product, the boat, the sails, everything they have there. That team will bounce back from it. What's quite interesting here is that the fact that they are facing some ambiguity and uh, adversity and also chaos, here they are. You watch. They'll bounce back. And the thing here is that this is actually going to make them stronger. This is actually going to help them move and step up to go through it. They didn't want this. No one wanted them to go through it. We wanted to see some fantastic racing. They'll bounce back. And for the good of the America's Cup and the whole actual regatta and the whole competition, uh, it'll be fantastic to see. So team, this is what I'm going to say to you. No matter what is thrown at you, stay calm. It is easy for me to say. Not always easy to stay calm in the whole scenario. You think about first responders. First responders who go into different situations. They have energy. They know where they're going. They have a strategy. But they are also calm. For all of us, we may stay calm. For some people, they show emotions differently. But what do you do as a leader on a daily basis? Do you stay calm? Or are you showing that you're nervous? Are you showing that you have no confidence? Are you not believing in yourself and your team and so forth? And so the important question here is plan. Always have a plan to understand, depending on the scenario, you know what to do next. You see, be strategic in your thinking and also in your actions. And so those who are in control or actually are calm, those who stay the calmer, sorry, are the ones who are in control. So for America Magic, they are staying calm and they are in control. To everybody, they look like they're they the duck on top of the water and the duck seems smooth on top of the water, but those legs, those feet underneath, they are going 10 to the dozen. They are going really fast. But to everyone else, that looks confident and calm. Do what you need to do, team, to make sure that you are calm. It does take practice to actually do this and do it on a regular basis. That's why we always learn from the different areas that we work in. We always learn from what's going on for us in our lives and in our businesses. So as a leader today, what will 2021 bring for you? What will you do and what will you bring to the table? There'll be curveballs thrown at you as well, but you need to stay calm. So in the midst of ambiguity and chaos, stay calm. Hey team, I wanted to offer you a free strategy session. If you are thinking about your goals or if there's things that you want to work on and you're around your leadership side of things and that, get together with me on a 30-minute call. Let's just have a chat on Zoom and let's talk about where you are and where you want to go. Let's talk about what I can do to help you. 
Because the thing is, there are certain things that you can do to go to new levels. It's all about you having the right attitude, but also taking control of where you're going next. And it's the going next that's really important. Things are going to happen in life. But what are you going to do? You're going to be in control and decide where you want to go and what you want to do? I think there's some things here that you might want to work on, and I'm here to help. Feel free to reach out to me. My email will be in the show notes, but also feel free to send me a message, a private message on social media. Hey, listeners, what we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and the unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Look out for the episodes as they're being released. Download them, have a listen, put a review and a rating, but also share them with your friends, your family, and your network. Hey, if there's any feedback you'd like to give me on the show, or if there's a question you'd like me to ask my guests as I'm interviewing them, or if there is a question for the Ask Dennis Freestyle episode, feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. All right, listeners, it's always great to have you here and tuning in to the episodes. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.